series, lesson one was about area and perimeter. And we really focused on circles, rectangles, and triangles. Lesson two was about volume, and it was about the volume of basically rectangular prisms. Let's see if I can draw a rectangular prism. They're not too bad for on the spot. And triangular prisms and things called cylinders. And so we spent most of lesson two working out the volume. And what we basically found was that we would find the area of the base of these shapes, and then just times by how deep they were, which we called the depth. Okay, so that was lesson two. Lesson three was about the volume of, and I'm not sure I'll be able to draw these shapes, but the volume of pyramids um, and cones and spheres. And the major formula that we were dealing with in that lesson was a third, the volume of these shapes was a third times the area of the base times the height. Uh, and the spheres were slightly different. These formulas are always given to you. This was just four thirds pi r cubed. Okay, so basically we've been working on area and perimeter and then volume for the last two lessons. Now today's lesson is going to be about something called surface area. And surface area is almost more related to lesson one, where we spoke about the area of a 2D shape, like how much area is there in a circle. And so we're going to ask ourselves today, basically, mostly we might get onto lesson three shapes, but mostly these shapes over here, how do we find the surface area of these shapes? And what calculations do we need to do to find these uh, the surface area of these shapes? And basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be summing up the area on the outside. So in this first shape, there'll be lots of rectangles. In the second shape, uh, the triangular prism, there will be triangles and rectangles. And then in the cylinder, there'll be two circles and whatever this thing is over here. Okay, so that's the plan. So give me a thumbs up in the chat if you understand where we're going and also ask any questions that you think might be useful before we, we start with the actual questions. I'm just interested to know, is there anything that you're worried about or anything that you, you want me to know as the teacher before I start? Okay. Awesome, people. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Let's get rolling. So very first question, uh, this is called a cuboid or a rectangular prism. I prefer the word rectangular prism. And I want, there is a question on the board now. The dimensions are three by five by eight. But before we do the calculation, I want to ask from the class, what are some strategies or methods or approaches we could use to find the surface area in a methodical way maybe you've learned about it in a previous grade what's an efficient way or what is the main ideas you need to think about as you try and find the surface area of this basically you're trying to add up all the areas on the outside of the shape so who has a, an idea maybe you could put it in the chat or raise your hand i'd love to hear if you've got a strategy that you used before in other grades Who feels like they may have seen something before or, um, or just pop it in the chat. What's the main thing we're going to be doing as we try to find the surface area? Anybody have any ideas? One of the things I was thinking about, maybe I should just draw in a little, little bit of 3D magic here, is it feels like this shape has matching pairs of sides. Oh, Zinclair kind of agrees with me. So it feels like there's a matching pair of rectangles here and here. And then it feels like there's a matching pair of rectangles here and here. And then on the top, there's a matching pair of rectangles there and there. Now, it looks a little bit like a crime scene. But 
I think I would just work out the area of each of those rectangles and then double each of them because there's two of them. So I want you to try and work out what you think the answer is for this. And then in the chat, if you could then put the answer that you think, because there's four answers here, there's A, B, C, and D, which of the four do you think is relevant here? Over to you guys. So what are my answers coming through? Let's see what I get if I agree with you. Plus. So I get 158 centimeters squared, which would give me C. No. Cool. So good news is finding the surface area is not terribly tricky as long as we remember the pairs of rectangles. There is another method you can use. Some people would use the base of the shape and then the, the perimeter of the base, but I'm going to stick with this for today. Okay. And I'm going to move on now. So if, if you need to take a screenshot of the screen, and we're going to move on to example two. But I like what I saw there. If you're feeling a bit lost, please let us know in the chat so I know to slow down. Okay, question number two. I want you to find me the surface area of this rectangular prism. What do you get for the surface area of this rectangular prism? Think about what you can use from last time. What ideas can you bring with you as you work that out? Do the ideas from the previous lesson still work or the probably previous question? Like what would, I think that would also be a six. And this would be an eight, eight. So ask yourself, how would you set it out? So I'm pretty confident I would still have the, the pairs of rectangles and then ask yourself, what are the numbers in the rectangle? So I know I have six times two. That would probably be this one. Okay, let's get rid of this. So I know I had these. And then I know I would have uh, two times eight. And then I know I would have six times eight. And so my final answers should be you should be getting 152 centimeters squared. Yeah, piece of, well, I want to say piece of cake, but once you know the process. Okay, guys, what I want to know from the classes. If you feel like you understand this type of shape, give me a thumbs up. And if most of us understand it, I'm going to move on to the next shape. However, if you still feel like you're a bit unsure and you want more practice, give us a thumbs down. Uh, because I, I'm feeling like I can probably move on, but I just want to make sure. Okay, so can I suggest we, we do one more of these? And then we'll move on to the next shape. Okay, so let's do this one. Find me the surface area of this shape over here. And then we're going to move on to the next type of prism. Okay, so as we begin 
the goal of finding the surface area. The surface area is the area on the outside. I still think visually I can see that there are these pairs of rectangles that I want to sum up. I want to add up their areas. And if we look at that, there's the back one, and then there's the front one. So I'm pretty confident I'm doubling whatever area, there's three different types of rectangles. And I'm simply just setting it up like this because I know that these twos are, are going to do my doubling. What I then need to decide is what are the sizes of my rectangles. And the first one I see here is 17 times 15. Now, you can't repeat like the set. So ask yourself how many other rectangles are there on the shape? And that should help you. So I've ticked off the bottom one. Then I see this one here. That looks like 15 times 12. And then the only one I haven't dealt with, I've dealt with the bottom and the top, side and side. Oh, the front one, which is going to be 17 times 12. So what do we get for our final answer? You should get 2 times 17 times 15 plus 12 plus 2 times 17 times 12. 1, 2, 7, 8. And it's millimeters squared because it's a unit of area. Yeah. And so all that means is that if you had to lay this out on a flat surface, you would fit 1,278 small squares of one millimeter by one millimeter onto this. Basically, if you had to need, if you needed wrapping paper to wrap around this, you would need 1,278 little squares of a millimeter by a millimeter to fit around the outside of this whole shape. Okay, I think we have mastered the rectangular prism and I think we need to take it up a notch and let's have a look at what's called a triangular um, based prism. So I want to know from the class and I'd love someone to put their hand up or just offer us a suggestion. Could you give me a strategy? I know my old rectangle strategy is not going to work anymore because I can see it. It's just not, it doesn't have that square shape anymore. Could you offer me a strategy for finding the surface area of this particular uh, shape? Yeah. Kuchle, let's go to you. Um, hi, sir. I think for the hey. triangle, we would use half base times height to find the area of the triangle. And then to yeah. find the... Yeah. Uh, so oh, you never mind, the... I just realized that we already have the side. No, but you're on the right track because I like what you're doing about the triangles. How many triangles do you think we have? Oh, we have to multiply that by two. Okay. So I think Kukla has given us a really good hint that she said, look, she knows the area of the triangles are half base times height. So if I'm looking at this, a half eight times six would be the area of that front triangle. But the problem we have is that there's two triangles. Okay, now I'm going to go to see a bonga because I think we can build on this idea of two triangles. So, so far, thank you, Kukle. You've got these two triangles. See a bonga, what else do we need? Um, hello, sir. Hey. I think in order to, to find the surface area, we need to get the, the, surf, the, um, the area for the two triangles and then the area for for all the rectangles around the, the uh -huh. triangle. How many rectangles do you think there are? Three, three, three rectangles. Aha, uh -huh. and you, that's fantastically correct because you know there's three sides of a triangle. So you can kind of see like each of these sides has their own like rectangle, if you think about it. So you have something like, like that going on. Um, so I think that we've got this guys. So now what I want you to try and do is I want you to think, okay, well, the area of a triangle is half base times height. The area of a rectangle is just length times breadth. Which of the options do you think is going to be the correct one here? 
So my my story is going to be basically triangle and then rectangle plus rectangle. Well, actually triangle times two. So see if you can get the answer for me while I do the half times eight times six times two. And then what's it going to be? It's going to be eight times 10 and then seven. Look, seven times 10. What are these going to be? Oh, oh okay. These are going to be, it's going to be symmetrical. Oh, that's seven. Yeah. So that is going to be seven times 10. So what do we get if we add all these things up? Times six plus eight times 10. Plus seven times 10. What are you guys getting? I'm getting 268 centimeters squared. And so if I get that, I th my answer is going to be B. Now, there are some people who are getting 258. So I wonder... Would anybody be willing to share with us what they did? And again, we all learn through this process. It's not even the people who give the right answers and the wrong answers are helping the class just as much. And so I was wondering if somebody who got A could tell us what method did they use or what approach? Um, maybe they used the six. Now, you wouldn't use the six for the rectangles because you can you see it's not connected to a rectangle? Like the only thing that's connected to a rectangle, this side would be a seven. And that would be a seven, that would be an eight. And so I think that's the key. Okay, so we're gonna, this is a little bit harder, this triangular prism thing. And so we're really gonna slow down a bit. But what I wanna point out is that in the next question, when you're finding the area of a triangular prism, you're always gonna have two triangles that are the same or congruent, and then you have three rectangles. And so I want you to think of that as your plan, like a man with, or woman with a plan. That's the plan that you're going to use. Okay. So take a screenshot there if you need to for this one, and we're going to give it another go. Okay. All right. So let me do, let's not do that one. Let's try Pythagoras. This is this one here. Uh, let's see if I can make all of these. I'm missing a side. That's also missing mm -hmm. a side. Mr. S. Yeah. I see there's a lot of confusion in the chat about that question. Okay. We will slow it right down and we'll do this one together. Okay. Let's have a look at this question. Actually do it all together and do it slowly. So if we look at this question, from the previous, we're going to try and find the surface area of the shape. Give me a thumbs up in the chat if you agree that there are two triangles and three rectangles. So give me a thumbs up if you agree with that statement. As you, if you look at the shape to find the surface area, do you agree with me that you see those three shapes? Okay. So then step one. Step one is do we have the base? So in order to find the area of a triangle, the formula is a half base times perpendicular height. In this question, the base is seven. It's here. And the height is three. So we've got that in theory. Now, obviously there's two of them, but we've got that. Now, what do these funny whisker things mean? Does anybody know, what does it mean when there's like three lines on that one and three lines on that one? Would anybody be willing to let us know or maybe unmute yourself, put your hand up and just let us know in quickly in audio or pop it in the chat. So Dante said they, oh, yeah, they're equal. So we know that this and this are seven and this is three and a half. Okay, now, Remember you said to me, there's two triangles and three rectangles. If I look at the shapes on here, this to me feels like it's a rectangle, which is 12 by seven. So that rectangle is gonna be, I suppose I should put it below here. 
if we think about there being three rectangles, there's going to be a 12 by 7 rectangle. However, there's also going to be a three and a half. So that's three and a half by 12 rectangle, which is over here. So see if you can follow my thinking as to what the last rectangle is going to be that's missing. And can you work out the area of the two triangles and then add them all together? I'll come along in a moment, but I just want to see, can you, can you think about what is this one going to be? I think this is also going to be a 7 by 12. And then what's the triangle going to be? So two times... I'll let you give it a bit of time and then see if you can find the surface area. I think I need to give you more time. See, Tando has a, an answer that they... So keep those answers coming as they, as they come in. What do you guys think? What do you guys think of this? So what have we got? We've got two a half times seven times three. And then we've got to add up these three. So this would be 84, I think. Seven times 12. This would be 84. And this would be 42. And so what's the total going to be? The total is going to be, and this is 21. So we've got 21 plus 84 plus 84 plus 42. And we get 231 centimeters squared. Okay, so I think the game plan when we come to triangular prisms is a different one. It's not the two times two times two story. It's the two triangles and the three rectangles. And that will give us the total surface area of this, of this shape. Okay, are there questions, guys? If there are questions or do you want me to clarify something, then just pop your hand up. But I'm assuming that we can, we'll do another one to practice this but it looks like it's getting a little bit easier from my side. Correct me in the chat if, if that's not the case. Oh, I'm glad to hear that, Kitzel. Awesome. Okay, take a screenshot if you need to, and uh, let's go from there. Now, I'm going to do something a little different here. I'll give you a hint. Let's find, let's... Before we have our break, let's find the surface area of the shape. But we have one slight problem. It feels like I've forgotten to include something. So we're going to do another question now where we find the surface area. So same type of question. But I want you guys to look and see, have I forgotten something? If I look at this, what have I forgotten? Or what, what's different compared to the last question? If I ask you to find the surface area, it feels a little bit like I've left something out. Have I been a bad teacher? Or is there something behind this? Kukle, what do you think? Um, Sir, we haven't, we don't have a perpendicular height to the triangle. So we need to use Pythagoras to get that. Aha, uh -huh, yes, we don't have this over here. Now the problem is, you can imagine if I want to find the surface area, I'm not going to know what's going on for the area of this triangle, but this means it's a right angle. So I want everyone to start by working out, I'll call this H. Step one is I want you to find me the height of this triangle and put that answer in the chat. And what I'm going to suggest you do is you use the theorem of Pythagoras. Okay, so you can do that. And then I want to see the height first. How would we do it? So we'd go... 25 squared equals 20 squared plus h squared. 
and then we would have to rearrange it. Sorry for my... And you should get H is 15 millimeters. So due to your fantasticness, we now have this as 15. I want you to try and go forward now and find me the surface area of this shape using what you've learned earlier in the lesson. Okay. And also while you're doing this, if you have a question about this topic, um, now is a great time to ask it. So you just pop your hand up and I would love to take a question from you. Otherwise, if you're just working hard, then see what you can get for the surface area here. Go for it, guys. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> be all the mathematician that you can be. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> What I do like about these questions is once you've got your battle plan, there's going to be slight variations, but essentially a triangular prism isn't going to start behaving differently. <laughs> so you're pretty good to go with. And then so what have we got? I suppose this would be. Pretty sure the triangles will be like that. And what are my rectangles going to be? Let's move this across the top. I know there's going to be three of them. So I can see that the bottom one will be that. And then. And then 25. So what do we get for all of that? Okay, so what I get for my surface area is two, 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 zero, and it's millimeters squared. Now, again, I just wanna point out that it's surface area, and area is always given in units of squares, like how many little squares would fit on the outside. And so that's why you say it's millimeter squared. But from what I can see in the chat, we seem to have gone, we seem to have improved on this one. So just quick little vote. If you're feeling okay with triangular prisms, thumbs up. If you're feeling a bit, just a little bit, then maybe like a thumbs down, just so I can get a sense of what is happening with you guys. Okay, we're doing really well. So we've already done the surface area of the, of the first two prisms. And all we will do after our break is we will look at the cylinder, basically. And that's the, the one we'll take deal with. Okay, but you know what needs to happen. We've been working hard for half an hour. So I want everyone on their feet. I want to see you just stretch up. Okay. Um, and for those students who maybe still need a little bit more um, reinforcement, remember that all of our videos are recorded. And so you can always watch these examples again. Okay, guys, even if it's going a little bit fast for you today. Okay, stretch it out, stretch it out. Let's do it. Oh, stand up. You can do it. Give Let's, that body a break. <laughs> give your body, invest oh in guys. yourself. William, there we go. William knows it's, he's worth investing in himself. Let's do this. Yes. Let's do it. Go, Dante, Come on, Yasmin. You see, Come I've got my gym top on already. I'm going to gym afterwards. Okay, let's, let's get the <laughs> I'm already motivated. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've got it, man. i got to get my legs up. Come on. Oh, I feel alive. Guys, you're missing out. If you're sitting on your bum, like, you're missing out. Trust me. <laughs> Lucero's okay. doing a little dance there. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Lucero's got so much rhythm. You can just see. It's just yeah. like it just emanates from her. Okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Brain break time, guys. Brain break time. So I bought you something a little special today. Don't get a fright. Okay. So you need to figure out what the little astronaut times an eagle minus a moon is. 
I'll give you one hint for this because it's a bit tougher than normal. I want you to think about what, how many different possibilities are there for something times something giving 14? So that's my one little hint. What do you think the uh, possible numbers are for something times something is 14? And if you figure that out, can it help you figure out the, the vertical equation? Are we going to Mars? Rosaria, maybe we are going to Mars. Maybe we are. <laughs> okay. So put in the chat, what numbers do you think is possible? So it's either seven and two or one and 14. So ask yourself then, what combinations might work? So if we assume, if you play with that, ask yourself, what ones will fit well for that for that one over there? So maybe just make an assumption. Where, where do you think, do you think the eagle should be a two or, or a seven? If I assume I'm going to start with that. <laughs> Cameron, I am taking it, it up a notch. Well, I was thinking, couldn't we try this being a seven? No, let's try this being a two. I'll tell you what, let's try it being a two. If I make that a two, what does the moon need to be? So if I make that a two, now if I'm wrong, I'll just reverse. But then I'm just, so then the moon would have to be 20. Okay, so we, now we haven't, we, I suppose we should finish this off first. If the moon is 20, what does the astronaut need to be? It would have to be 25. Okay, so there's my astronaut. And then if that's 25 and I'm going down, what does the rocket need to be? So two times 20, again, it looks like things are going well for me. So it feels like the rocket. Yes, I'm seeing it in the chat from Nawazi. The rocket has to be seven. Let's just check 25 plus seven is 32. Seven times two is 14. Two times 20 is 40. I think we're good. What's the final answer gonna be? So the little spaceman is 25. The eagle was two and the moon was 20. So my final answer should be 30. Final answer should be 30. Yeah. So I did make it a little bit harder today. I don't know if you let me know in the chat if you liked it or you disliked today's brain break. It was, I just, I was looking for something a little bit different. Um, I thought it was. It was hard, but it was cool in some ways, uh, if if I can say that about a math thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll see if I can find, I felt like we, um, you know, we'll, we'll try and alter the, the equation puzzle like this, where we make it a little bit more interesting going forward. Not to cause us says, bring back the fruits. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right, we'll see, we'll see, we'll mix it up. We'll make fruit salad, how about that? Okay, last part of the lesson, guys. We are gonna go back to the cylinder. Um, so uh, I want a battle plan. Let's have a look here. Let's start with this. So it says that we've got a cylinder and it says Meg wants to calculate the curved surface area of the cylinder. Now the curved surface area of the cylinder is gonna be the bit like here. Now, if we want to find the surface area of the whole cylinder, I think most of you will agree with me that there's a circle on top and there's a circle on the bottom. And so if we know the area of a circle is pi r squared, we know the surface area of a cylinder is going to be 2 pi r squared for the two circles. But we then have to worry about this curved bit that's wrapping around over here. Now, what this question is 
suggesting is that this curved bit, when unwrapped, is actually a rectangle. So it's almost like saying for a cylinder, the battle plan is two circles plus a rectangle. And I think that's okay. Now, the question is, in a cylinder, we have what's called the radius, which is this thing here, which is R. We call this thing over here the H, the height. And so I'm pretty sure that one part of the rectangle is just going to be the height. Well, in this case, it's going to be 10. What I want to know is what is this length thing the same as, or what's it called if we, we talk about going around a circle? So what's that called? That's what I want to know in the chat. Because it feels like this bit over here is just this bit over here. Okay, so it's not the diameter. The diameter would stretch right from the one side across the middle to the other side. I think this is called the perimeter, or sometimes the fancy word we use is called the circumference. So this, if you think about finding the surface area of a cylinder, your battle plan is two circles, and we know the area of one circle is pi r squared, and then it's a rectangle. And the one rectangle, the, it's going to be the height of the, of the cylinder on the one side, and then it's going to be the perimeter or the, the circumference along the top. Now, in lesson one, we spoke about the formula for the circumference, and what it's going to be is something called 2 pi r, where r is the radius. So if you imagine this rectangle, how would you find the area of it? You would go height times by uh, 2 pi r. And the 2 pi r is just the circumference of the circle. Okay, so that is a little bit of a... Okay, so I've kind of given away the answer for this one. <laughs> so I'll move on to an actual question. But what do you think, if we answer the question, the length of the rectangle is what? A, B, C, or D? Pop it in the chat. Okay, so it's not going to be, it's going to be, let's have a look. Okay, it's going to be C. The circumference of the circle. Okay, so that's that bit there. So if we are talking about the curved area of a cylinder, it's this rectangle. What I think a lot of people are going to have to remember is that the, the formula for the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r. And so I'll write it out for you again. And then the h is from the height of the shape. And so the battle plan is two circles and a rectangle. Okay, let's do an ex actual example together. If I start this question, I want you first to find me the area. We're not going to do the rectangle yet. We're just going to find, find me the area of the top and bottom circles together. So I want you to find me the area of the two circles. Remembering that the formula for the area of a circle is pi r squared. So you, that's something which you'll have to memorize. Basically, the area of one circle is pi r squared. Given what you see on the drawing, what is the area of the two circles combined and added together? Work that out for me. Okay, so I know there's two circles. There's pi, I'm leaving a space, and there's squared. In this question, the radius is seven. And so if I put that into my calculator, I would get 98 pi or uh, 307.876. So 
I'll put here approximately 307.887, uh, so 88. However, that is not the whole question. If I want the surface area of the whole of the shape, there is a second part, which is the rectangle part. So we've done the two circles. I think that from this drawing, I can see the one side of the rectangle is 13. I want you to try and remember what, well, I'll even give it to you. This top part of the rectangle is just this bit here. And can you use that to help you figure out the area of the rectangle and then add that area of the rectangle to get you your final answer? So we've done this and this. What we're trying to figure out is what is the area of the rectangle that wraps around the outside? And once we've got that, we're going to fill it in here. And then we're going to get our final answer. Now, if there are questions, raise your hand. I would love to answer a question uh, or a comment or pop it in the chat. Otherwise, see what you can figure out there. Oh, Mochamotsi, let's go to you. Do you have a question, Mochamotsi? I'm asking you to unmute, so you can just unmute. You'll see there's a little bubble, and you just unmute it there. Hey, Mochamotsi, what can I help you with? Hello, sir. Can hey. you just please, please, can I ask the question again? I didn't understand. Okay. Are you okay with the two circles, Mohamotsi? No, sir. I only got the, 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 for the two circles, yeah. I got it, sir. Okay, you got the two circles. Okay, now, if you imagine the rectangle, are you convinced that if you, there's a rectangle around the outside, are you okay with it being a rectangle? Because yes, sir. that, and it, huh? What did you say? I didn't say nothing, sir. I'm just listening. Oh, okay. So basically, the one thing is that it is a rectangle that wraps. If you ever look at a piece of paper, have you ever like folded a piece of paper up into like a, a thing that you look through? You'll see how you can form a cylinder with a piece of paper. And then if you unwrap it, it's still an A4 piece of paper. Now, the key thing for this question is to know that the height is the one side of the rectangle. And then the curvy part is just the circumference. And the way we get the circumference is basically we're going to go 13 times by 2 pi, and then r was 7. And so we get the area of the rectangle there. And so let's just see what we get for that. 13 times 2 times pi times 7. You should get about 5, 7, 1 point uh seven seven and then the final answer will just be taking this bit and this bit and adding it together now there will be some slight um so is there a formula to calculate the rectangle in the cylinder there is the formula is height times two pi r so I'll write the formula out for you at the very end. Let's just get the answer first. So if we add these together, assuming I'm rounding off, now if you don't round off to two decimal places as you go, there'll be a slight difference. But for my purposes, I'm just going to round off like that. You get, some of you will get in terms of pi. If you round it off, you will get 879.65 centimeters uh, squared. If it was in terms of pi, you would have 98 pi plus t times 2 times 7 pi. Uh, some of you will get 280 pi, is what I got. Uh, let's look. So you could also get 280 pi, and those people will get 879.65 as well. Yeah, so those are the two 
answers that you would get for the surface area. So I was asked in the chat about a formula. The formula for the surface area of a cylinder is two pi r squared, and then it's two pi r times by height. And this is the rectangle, and these two, this part is the two circles. Okay. So what we're going to do there is I'm going to close the lesson for now because we are going to ask you to do a little quiz. And I'm just going to finish the lesson by asking for some questions from the class. Like, are there some areas from today's lesson that you'd like me to go over? So we've covered three shapes today. Just to review, we've covered the rectangular prism. We've covered um, the triangular prism and we've covered the cylinder. Each of these shapes has a slightly different battle plan. And so the goal today is if you could be more familiar with the battle plan, obviously you need to go and practice more, but the quiz will help you practice a little bit now. Um, so Don Tukosa, what part, I'd love you to come on the line and just answer what part of the cylinder one would you like me to talk more about? I think it's the rectangle part. So what I think will help you a lot is if you take a piece of paper from like, uh, I don't know if I have a piece of paper for you now. Can I do this? Let's see if I can do this live for you. Yeah, see this piece of paper here? It's A4, it's definitely a rectangle. What happens when I turn it like this? Can you see how it makes a, um, a cylinder? Unravel. And so that's the magic of the um, cylinder. It's a rectangle plus the two circles on, on top there. Okay. Um, you're right, guys. Today's lesson was a bit, um, <laughs> today's lesson was a bit trickier. Um, and that's, but it's also, just let it sink in for a bit. Remember, you can watch this video again um, and think about the battle plan. What do you need to think about? For the cylinder, it's just the two circles and a rectangle. You know this is the height, and you know that this will be the, the perimeter of the circle or circumference. And you just need to know the, circu the circumference is 2 pi r, or you could say diameter times pi, but I prefer it like that. Okay, yeah. And remember this, yeah, it'll take some time for you to get used to surface area, and it's a journey. You can't get it all in one lesson. So... Label, if you could please put the link to the quiz in the chat. Um, for those who are new, especially, or joined this module halfway through, you know, the quiz is just a formative, it's just to help guide you on your journey. It's not meant to be a massively judgmental thing. Uh, but yeah, see how it goes. See what you remember from today's lesson as you approach that quiz. And then we will uh, start our next topic on Monday next week, which will be statistics. Oh, it's a pleasure, William. I hope that we got you started on the journey of this um, topic. And yeah, pleasure, just keep practicing. Yeah, cool. Sweet. Uh, are there any questions about getting into the quiz or are you guys feeling like you can get there? Bye, everyone. <laughs> Peace out. Bye, yeah. guys. Bye, Charlie. Bye, everyone. Um, sir. Yes. Um, just a quick question. I want to know what's the difference between the sec between the circumference of the circle and the diameter of the circle. Okay. So if we look at a circle, the diameter is this it's two radiuses basically so here's a radius here's a radius together that is a diameter the circumference or the, what we say the perimeter of the circle is going around the outside does that make a bit of sense oh yes so the diameter is basically the radius times two exactly yeah oh, all right thank you sir Pleasure, man. All right. Peace out, everyone. I hope that you have a good rest of the evening.